Comedy Central Stand Up presents Sarah Schaefer. Give it up for Sarah Schaefer. That was fake. <laughs> How are y'all? Yeah. But like, how are y'all? Ooh. Things have been nutty lately. This year? Whoa. <laughs> this year, I mean, who here is already ready for it to be over? Yeah. I'm not talking about the year, I'm talking about all of it. Who here is done? <laughs> yeah, I'm done. Bring the end of the world now. Take me in the first wave. I don't want to survive. Mama's tired. I don't want to forage. I don't want to go on a supply run. I have thought this through. I don't even want to have to repopulate the earth because I'm the only woman left in my group of very attractive younger men and I have to have sex with all of them and it's not slutty, it's noble. Like, I don't even want that anymore. I'm done. Doesn't do it for me like it used to. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to start the show off on such a morbid note, uh, but <laughs> society is crumbling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people are like, why? Why? And you can Google why. You know, like, articles will come up. But I don't need to Google it, because I already know why. I know why we're in this mess. I've identified the culprit. There's one source of the decay of human civilization, and that is a particular trend in home decor. <laughs> now, some of you have this up in your house right now, and what it is is inspirational quotes <laughs> on rustic pieces of driftwood in multiple fonts. You know what I'm talking about. Now, as we know, for the quote to go on the rustic piece of driftwood, it must feature one of the key words. If it doesn't have one of these key words in the quote, it's not inspirational enough, do not put it on wood, don't waste our time. <laughs> Those words include journey, <laughs> faith, hope, sister, <laughs> live, laugh, love, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Kitchen. The whole set is me just listing the words. The whole show is just this. Wine. <laughs> Blessed. <laughs> Believe. Believe. Believe is so powerful. It's so potent. It can live by itself on a piece of driftwood. <laughs> Some people don't even put it on wood. Some people just tattoo it on the front of their neck, and that's a choice. <clears throat> How does it work? Like, if you need a sign to remind you to laugh, are you all right? <laughs> you go through your house and you see it, and you're like, oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> like, talk to someone. You were not okay. <laughs> I always do feel a little bit bad when I tell that joke, because there's usually at least one woman's face in the crowd just dissolving off her head. <laughs> and she's just like, oh, no. That's me. <laughs> Look, I don't mean, I'm just poking fun. Those signs are fine. As long as you don't have too many of them, right? And there's a very easy way to figure out if you have too many inspirational quotes on rustic pieces of driftwood in multiple fonts. All you have to do is just close your eyes. Everybody here, just close your eyes. Imagine your house. And you're just going to go through the house and you're going to count them up. Go through the bedroom, bathroom, hallway, Living room, kitchen, maybe you have a little, you had me at Merlot. 
Right, that counts as two. <laughs> Don't forget the front porch. That's where people put their signs that announces what kind of house this is. <laughs> it's usually blessed and, and there's a mess of some kind. <laughs> Everybody got their number? All right, if your number is greater than zero, you have too many of them. It's too <laughs> many. We're all in, a, it's a very tense time right now. I myself suffer from anxiety and I could use a little more kindness in my life to myself and to others, you know, yeah. One of the ways my anxiety plays out is at night because I suffer from this disorder called night terrors. When I first started having these night terrors, I became intimately familiar with my scream. Now I'm talking about that sound that comes out of you when you face death. Most people think that they know what that sounds like, even if they've never been in a scenario. They're like, yeah, I know. I know what my scream sounds like. Half the women in this room right now are like, oh yeah, I've got a great scream. I have the scream of a skinny blonde woman. I have the kind of scream that makes Batman show up instantly. Like, you don't know that, okay? And I'm just here as a cautionary tale to let you know, because I found out I don't have that kind of scream. I have the kind of scream that makes other people scream. I have the kind of scream that turns people into vegetarians because they think it's the sound of a pig dying. <laughs> and the next time they see bacon, they're like, I can't eat that. I can't unhear the cries. Now I know my scream is bad because when I first started having these night terrors, I lived in a tiny apartment in Brooklyn where people lived above me, below me, to the side of me. And not once did anyone check on me. <laughs> Nobody banged on the wall like, are you okay in there? And I know they could hear me dying because I could hear them making sex. <laughs> but I don't blame them because it's a bad scream. It is a bad scream. And I'm gonna demonstrate it for you right now. <laughs> Here's my scream. <gasps> like, be honest with me. If you heard that outside your window at night, <sighs> like, would you call 911 and be like, oh my God, someone please help that poor woman, call the police, no. <sighs> You'd be like, turn the lights off, get the kids, meet me in the panic room, go, go, go. <laughs> <sighs> like, that is embarrassing. That is something rotten inside of me trying to get out. Like, I can, <laughs> I can hear women out there like, oh, that is bad. <laughs> my scream is better than that. My scream is like, oh. Congratulations, you have the scream of a human being. I have the scream of an entity. The kind of thing that chases you through the woods at night, just like <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she was like <laughs> <laughs> It's good though that I didn't do this. Like <laughs> Like cause you know when like a demon changes levels, it's get way scarier. <laughs> it's way scarier. <laughs> oh, she's coming down. Oh, speaking of nightmares. Does anybody else feel like they're losing their grip on reality <laughs> as of late? I really do. Like, what is, remember truth? <laughs> oh, those were the days, huh? When you knew what was real? Oh God. What is the truth? We don't even know anymore. And I think part of it is because we've entered into the golden age of conspiracy theorists. It is their time. Now, you probably all know one hardcore conspiracy theorist. Usually they have a name like Uncle Dennis, right? <laughs> it used to be that Uncle Dennis was pretty harmless, right? Like maybe the extent of it would be like at a family function, Thanksgiving maybe, there's a quiet moment, everyone's chewing. Uncle Dennis sees his in, and he's like, <clears throat> <clears throat> y'all know what they're saying about the frogs, don't you? <laughs> And you're just like, no, Uncle Dennis, we don't. Please enlighten us. <laughs> it's not funny, Sarah. The frogs are turning gay. <laughs> now they don't know why they're turning gay, but I do. I figured it out. Barack Obama did it. <laughs> and you're just like, no, Uncle Dennis, no. You hit him on the head with a rolled up newspaper. Like that's what it used to be like. 
But now, the situation has changed. Things have shifted. Now, Uncle Dennis is literally the next national security advisor of the United States of America. It's like, oh my God, that is terrifying. <laughs> now, say what you want about the man, but I do 100% blame Donald Trump for this phenomenon. I don't know how he did it, but he put out some kind of clarion call that only the conspiracy theorists could hear. It was like, ooh. And they all emerged from their evidence sheds like 17 year cicadas just ready to make a lot of noise. It's like, this is our time. You will finally hear us. And we are, we're hearing them. I literally Googled last week, like, is the earth flat? Maybe. <laughs> There's a lot of chatter. <laughs> Giving them a lot of platforms. Jeez. Now, I mentioned evidence sheds. If you're not familiar with the concept of an evidence shed, an evidence shed is like a TV trope. It's something you see in TV shows and movies, and it's when a detective has a shed out back his house or hidden in the woods somewhere where he's trying to solve that one crime that he can't let go of. Now, he's not supposed to be working on the case anymore, no. <laughs> because back at the station, the chief was like, give me your badge, hand over your gun. You're in too deep, McDaniels. I got City Hall breathing down my neck. You look like crap, go home, spend some time with your family. He's not spending time with his family. He's out back in the shed trying to connect some goddamn dots. <laughs> now, I know I'm out on a limb right now and not many of you are with me, but I do need to speak to you briefly about modern day evidence sheds. <laughs> Have you seen what they're using to solve crimes with these days? Dry erase boards. <laughs> like a whiteboard, are you serious? Are you serious? If you really cared about solving that crime, you would get out that red string tied around each individual thumbtack, <laughs> connecting each piece of evidence like you give a damn. If I had an evidence shed, I'd be up in Joanne's Fabrics every single morning preparing for the day, creating a beautiful murder collage that no one would ever forget. I don't mean to divide the audience, but we're divided enough as it is, but I had to speak my truth just then. Thank you for listening. <laughs> it's a tense time to speak your truth. It's tense everywhere you go. But there's nowhere right now more tense than an airplane. Like, have you felt it inside an airplane right now? It is crazy. People are just ready for anything. They're just ready. They, everybody's got their phone open to the video app and their thumb is just hovering over the red record button. Like, I'm gonna be ready. You try it, I'll be ready. Like, just in case like a flight attendant is dragging out a racist toddler and kicking it in the head. It's like, I'm gonna get this. <laughs> Hashtag justice for somebody. We're not sure who yet. <laughs> everybody's really stressed out when they travel on airplanes, but not me. I'm chill. I am so relaxed when I travel. Show up to the airport, long lines, fine. TSA wants to pat me down, get in there. <laughs> Safety first, be thorough. <laughs> Crying baby on the plane, God's miracle. Let it out, little one. <laughs> be our mouthpiece. And people are like, how do you do it, Sarah? How do you remain so calm? I'm like, it's very simple. I just live by one simple motto when I go on a trip. One simple motto. I just say to myself, let it roll off your back. Let it roll off your back, it's so easy. So for instance, I was on a plane recently and the man sitting next to me was scrolling through Twitter well after it was time. <laughs> you know what time I'm talking about. Airplane mode time. The flight attendant came by and she saw it and she was like, sir, it's time to put it into airplane mode. He turns to me and he's like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> like if they don't put it into airplane mode, like that's really gonna bring the plane down. <laughs> and I was just like, yes, they will! 
let it roll off your back. Keep it chill. Life tips. Feel free to use these. As I've noticed anxiety going up on the airplane, I've noticed a correlating uptick in loose animals on the plane <laughs> out of their package. <laughs> Has anyone else noticed this phenomenon? There's more loose animals than there used to be on the airplane. What happens when your emotional support animal is causing me to need therapy? <laughs> and I asked this because I read a headline that said, woman brings comfort owl on flight to Miami. It's like, what, Wait, an owl? An owl, okay. So first off, I just want more information. How? How did you figure out you needed an owl to get through a regional flight? Were you just like walking through the forest one day, just spiraling out about what you said on the conference call? Just like, you stupid, stupid idiot. Oh God, you always say the wrong thing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes. Where are you? I felt good. Come here. Ooh, ooh, come here, Allie. Come here, come here. Don't struggle, you're mine now. Like, how did it happen? Second of all, I don't know if you guys are familiar, experts obviously know this, but the owl is the devil's bird. <laughs> and imagine one of those birds sitting on the plane, three rows up from you, its head poking up over the seat back, just staring at you with its big yellow eyes. And its beak pointing down, and there's like a mouse tail hanging out of it, and it's still moving. And you know that body is facing forward. That head is turned all the way around, <laughs> like the demon that it is. That's a plane-wide panic attack. And also, if you think about it, it's kind of screwed up to bring your pet bird on a plane. <laughs> it's a dick move, right? <laughs> Again, we just need to be gentler with each other, you know? Let each other try to get through the day without crying, right? Like, especially, you know, you know what it's like when you're like, you want to cry? Um, and it's just not the right time, like it's a work meeting or something, or like right now. <laughs> You're just like, it's not now, but like it's coming, you know? You just feel it. Um, I actually have a way of dealing with that. It's a quick, another quick life tip for you guys. Uh, lucky you. Um, so here's what I do when I'm about to cry and I feel it coming and it's just not the right place. Um, I just don't let the tears out. Don't let them out, okay? Just whatever you do, keep the, keep the eye dry as a bone. Push them down, punch the tears down, shove them, this is healthy, shove them down. Let them build and build over time, maybe years even. Let them build up, build up until you're about to blow, hold it in, and then step into an art museum and let it rip. <laughs> And I do that because I like to make the other people in the museum think that I just get the art more than they do. <laughs> if I'm gonna suffer, I might as well feel culturally superior and highly sophisticated while doing so. <laughs> it's perfect. If you're upset, don't cry, hold the tears in, go into a museum, find a stripe, sit down in front of it, openly weep. The dumber the painting, the better. <laughs> you know when you go in a museum, there's always that one painting that's just a white square with a dot in the middle of it? And you see it and you're just like, screw you! Oh, I could do that, come on! Probably got paid a million dollars for that crap. Jeez. Honey. That lady is crying at the painting. <laughs> Look at her. She, she's so upset. She's just staring at it. She, what does she see that we don't see? <sighs> oh, yeah. Oh, I 
see it now. <laughs> the dot is her father. <laughs> oh. Guys, thank you so much. I'm Sarah Schaefer.